Good morning, Board of Directors, Executive Officer, and Staff. My name is Bill McNicholas, the Save Marinwood Plaza Now Oversight Committee, Prosperity Cleaners Cleanup. That's case number 21 S is in SAM 0053. First, I'd like to thank uh, the Executive Officer and Staff for the uh, Intermediate Remedial Action Plan for the well on Silvera Ranch. And it was timely. Uh, we did request for Madam Chairman's, uh, Chairperson's suggestion at the last meeting to request to be put on the agenda. Executive Officer replied that it would be updated in the status report unless new data is obtained and shows something very significant that would reflect being put on the agenda. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank, and I see him around for some men, Messrs. Lambert and Melier for meeting with us and providing us board perspective and actions uh, last week. The committee is working with them to put together a meeting of all parties involved in this scenario, plus the Marin County Supervisor Conley and the Marin County Department of Health Services. site 
that's SDM5, which is the hotspot, one of the two hotspots right here, uh, that was injected back in 2011, had a significant decline in soil vapor. The others had not been injected with anything, and they've been basically maintaining the same level of uh, micrograms per cubic meter. What we need is really some immediate uh, action to get this started, to get treated, reincorporated into the program, including the ranch, and even putting monitoring wells on the ranch. We can't wait till Hoyt or the Ringwood Plaza gets around to it because they want to drag the process out and get this program implemented, and especially if they need to do excavations discussed at the community meeting a couple of years ago, which said they may have to come out as deep as 34 feet, but only after the shopping center is torn down. And yes, it can be done in executive order under emergency situations, and based on the scenario and the community's uh, feelings about this threat, we strongly feel that action needs to be taken, not wait for the plan to come out, another eight months to a year for something to develop, then get a plan of action time frame out beyond that, which could be several years, and nothing being done. When we got a plume, we don't even know where it is, it's continuing to expand and grow towards the bay, and it's already under Miller Creek. Thank you for your time. Mr. McNichols, might I ask a question? And, and yes, sir. Staff can weigh in on this. Uh, it's hard to see that, but it appears that the scale for the hot spot is about an order of magnitude higher than it is for the other locations, so that the concentrations initially uh, on, on that graph are much higher to start with. Is that correct? Yes. So the, the concentration. Well, no, let me ask for confirmation from, from our from our staff. I mean, this this isn't a hearing, but this is this is new information that goes into what we will deal with as an organization, which is the preparation of a, an acceptance of a sampling and remedial action plan. Um, Mr. Hill, can you comment on, on the scale factor here? Uh, Stephen Hill, head of the Toxics Cleanup Division. I couldn't read the scale either, so uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Ralph, do you have anything that you could add there? Um, the mic, Ralph. Ralph, the mic. Yeah. Offhand, I can't read the scale. So can, uh, this is Ralph Lambert, who's the project manager for this case, Board employee. Um, but the scales are different. The hotspot, that was the eastern hotspot. Uh, was much higher than anywhere else, and it was treated actually a couple of methods. And it takes a while for the treatment. You can see that it takes a while to, for that treatment to be effective. And for the soil gas, it's, uh, the decline is about 99% so far, but the scales are different. Okay, I, we do have to be careful uh, as to how far we get into this. I just want to make sure that we understand this, that it goes to the staff with the necessary specificity so it will inform our action when there actually is public care. Correct. Well, what our whole argument is the fact that was treated, and you can see the decline. The other five sites were never treated, and they have maintained pretty much the same level. Right. So the next speaker we have is Raymond Day.
explain what some of the definitions because we we also prepared this for people in the neighborhood to to go ahead and see our slides. And uh, I'm sure that you're familiar with the terminology, so I won't go into that. I just wanted to reiterate that from the research that we found from the EPA, it indicates that those soil vapors will follow the utility lines or path of re least resistance. And these include the sewer lines, the uh, storm water drain lines, the uh, water lines going into the community and other sources of utilities in the neighborhood. Uh, this gives you an idea of what happens then with those soil vapors. They go into the following the utility lines. They go into the uh, community and into the structures and they will actually penetrate the concrete where there are cracks in the concrete or uh, where the utility lines going into those structures are not sealed. So this is a major concern for us. And where these hot spots are across from the, uh, the actual uh, Possum Marinwood area, which is right across the street, they, uh, they are within 60 feet, we measured it out, it's within 60 feet uh, of the, uh, the actual Casa Marinwood where the hot, one of the hot spots was located. Now this was from EPA and it's just an example to show the uh, citizens as far as what happens with vapor intrusion and how it comes through the, uh, it'll come through the cement, go up through into the structure, and since the gases are not going to be visible, the homeowners won't even know it's there until they finally get uh, some, uh, they get sickness or illness or something like that that they can't explain. Now the Brenda Plaza area where the hot spots that I'm talking about are located are right in this area. And they, they did additional test wells on this side of the street through the concrete, but there is a Marin Municipal Water District line that runs parallel with Marinwood uh, added it right along here. So the vapors, if they were coming from these hot spots on this side, would tend to go to those water lines as opposed to, you know, probably the readings would be lower if they got down on this side of the street, and that's our concern. What we're recommending, because this is an entrance to Casa Marinwood, right in here, is to do a grid sampling of vapors, soil vapors, in this area to ensure that those vapors are not going into the entrance here to Casa Marinwood. And this is another entrance to Casa Marinwood where a gas station was located up the road. They did a sampling well over here on this past Friday. And uh, I believe they said that uh, generally that takes about a month to get the results back after it goes through the process of the labs and such as that. This was a slide that was uh, shown to you and prepared by your staff back in February 2014, which indicated where the PCE concentrations were. And even after treatment in November of 2014, they still exceeded residential screening levels and commercial screening levels. And that's underneath the, uh, the slab in the, uh, where the cleaners were located. 
there's PCE concentrations in the indoor air, and this is with the liquor store that is was right next to the cleaners. Here's when the uh, the bioinjection was done in November 2014, and then afterwards the uh, levels went down, and then they're spiking back up again. So that's our concern, and, and the, the problem is that they're using commercial screening levels on the people that are working in the liquor store, and they're assuming that the people are only working eight hours a day. This is a family-owned operation, and if you know anything about family operations, they don't work eight hours a day. They work more hours than that. Let me let me step in here. I, I've been pretty generous in terms of time for something that is not on the agenda. We, we do appreciate public participation, but since this is not an evidentiary hearing and there and, and there is one, um, I want to make sure that the factual information is given to the staff for their analysis, and we don't dwell on it at great length. And that you, you kind of you get to the point about what you want. Uh, us to do that's different than the, than the executive director's report, rather than go into a very long explanation of the, the factual material. There will be an opportunity to, to debate that um, in early 2016, but, but um, we have heard from you for several meetings now, so if you could uh, summarize now, and if the next speakers could be more succinct, um, we do need the factual information through the staff, and there'll be plenty of opportunity to, to, to gauge that, but, but I'd like to get to the rest of the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the concern of the residents is that they'd like to see something done in terms of intermediate measures to uh, go ahead and treat the, uh, with bio uh, treatment remediation methods at the hot spots that are located outside of the cleaners on their side of the uh, location where it's identified as high incidence of the, uh, the pollution. And uh, the reasoning is that it, it does, it has a potential threat to them as far as health. And we know that, that uh, from uh, discussions with people in the neighborhood that are, have their property values impacted uh, from realtors, et cetera, asking questions about, about what is going on with the Casa Marinwood situation there. So that's what we're asking for, is some intermediate measures, because the concern is that if we wait until January when they propose the plan, by the time that plan is approved, it's vetted, public comment and such as that, it could potentially be seven to eight months before anything is even started. So that's the concern. Okay. Okay? We understand your request. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Ann Moran. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, I'm on the board of Castle and Ringwood, and I've lived there since uh, the end of 1969. And during that time, we've had a number of floods from Miller Creek onto our property, and uh, a number of the homes have uh, flooded right up through the foundation because many of the people have cracked foundations. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, during the time we've lived there, we have gone to court to try to get things, of, various things about our building uh, buildings uh, remediated, but we're told that we filed too late. Yes, there was the homes were built in substandard ways, but uh, we got no help from uh, the courts at getting them fixed. Um, also, we've had seven people uh, die on one street from cancer. These people may have died for other reasons, but, but it certainly does not bode well. We have, our pool is full of little kids every day. I hate to think what is coming up through their foundations, and we'd like the answers. 
right away. We don't want to wait months and months. If you could help us, we would certainly appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Next, we have Stephen Nestle. Yes, hi, I'm Stephen Nestle, and I'm 57 years old. I can hardly believe it, but uh, I assume some of you have reached that number. I um, came of age in the late 70s, and during that time, the uh, Love Canal was all talked about and uh, probably shaped all of our uh, ideas about pollution, toxic waste, and I'm sure it influenced you to go into some of your careers. What have we learned in this time? Well, I, when, I, when I talk about what have we learned, what I mean is how do we deal with these sorts of problems? Um, in that particular case, I'll remind people, and some might not know, is uh, it was a small working class community, much like Marinwood is, and um, very powerful interest on the other side. There was a huge toxic waste dump, and I'm not comparing our toxic problems to theirs, but there were powerful interests and entrenched bureaucracy and political interests trying to mitigate the public as opposed to the problem. So uh, what we learned about uh, Marinwood, we've learned that the toxic plume is not just contained at the uh, site, but it uh, goes a quarter mile or so uh, into the Severa Ranch property. That's a huge amount of uh, potential damage that we're looking at. Um, and we've been subject to all kinds of misinformation. Our supervisor, um, Susan Adams, uh, wrote in the Marin IJ piece in uh, May 2013 that uh, the toxic waste had been remediated. I guess that would have been a surprise to all of you because, all, in fact, all remediation uh, stop, efforts stopped in 2011. There's a word for this. And I'm not going to say it because I don't want to be impolite. But uh, to make a long story short, she's no longer our supervisor and she was subject to a recall campaign. Now this is, I don't know if this is going to work. Okay, this is actually video from uh, uh, <coughs> February uh, 2014 when the attorney for uh, Marinwood Plaza LLC stood up and said, and you know, You've been getting calls from Supervisor Susan Adams and Assemblyman Mark Levine, and they agree with us. You should fake, not do this order. You should lengthen out the time of compliance. And the, the reasons, of course, were, were just financial. I would again request that you get to what it is that you want us to do. I'm getting the politics of it. Okay. They, uh, shoot. Uh, there's also been uh, factually inaccurate and misleading reports. And unfortunately, I don't think we can blame Stephen Hill, but he was quoted in the paper as saying uh, that the state didn't think that uh, the danger would go out 100 feet, and yet the own, your own data uh, shows that uh, the geological reports that it went out 200 feet, feet to SB, I guess, 26, and uh, that's at three times uh, the uh, the level for for uh, residential, and that's a mere 80 feet from uh, uh, Casa Marina. Bottom line is, who's advocating for us? You're supposed to be advocating for us. That's why you went into this, this, this glorious task of, of, of protecting the environment and protecting the people. Who's advocating for us? We know that the, the, the money interests, we know that the political interests are on the other side, but who's advocating for us? Who's advocating for the people and the environment? 
We need you. Thank you. And, and last, we have um, Ms. Solera. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, my mom is the owner operator of our dairy ranch over at the downstream property that's affected asked me to come today. Um, the latest findings have really, really troubled us. We have learned, as of last week, that the plume carrying the PCE has traveled the entire, traversed the entire north face of our property north of Miller Creek. So it's gone as far as it can on our property line north of Miller Creek. We are now waiting for the results of the testing that was done south of Miller Creek that really um, goes right into the heart of our dairy footprint where the animal corrals are. Um, it's you know, really unbelievable to us that it has come to this, that there could have been so much time wasted since 2008. Mind you, this plume is probably on the move decades before that. But the fact that the property owner of the plaza became aware of this situation and had scientific experts who know how PCE travels, who knows that there's a real mystery to groundwater movement. You just don't, you just don't do nothing. And that's what was done for so long. And then when we were contacted, they very much downplayed it and said, you know, there's probably not going to be anything found. And, you know, we joined them in that sense of denial because, of course, this was a real horror for us to even consider that this could have come to our property. It has tainted our groundwater. There is a trace of PCE in our well water. And while it's well below the acceptable level. It's in the well water. We are going to have well head treatment. And while that is necessary, we do not believe that this is sufficient. The genesis of this pollution has to be addressed. The plaza site has to be cleaned up. The sampling and the investigation is fine in our perspective as long as you're learning how you're not being affected. But for us, we're learning how much we're being affected. And it's very, very troubling. And why I'm here today on behalf of my mother and, of course, for myself, is to ask you to push the action plan forward so that there's action integrated into it. Because planning and studies don't do it. Our land is getting the short end of the stick. And I can't believe that the property owner wouldn't want to do the right thing. This is very much, very clear that it's a matter of economics. And I can understand how that's a pressure. But that doesn't mean that you can go and pollute someone else's property just because it's cheaper for you to wait and have a developer participate in the cleanup. It just doesn't, it's just not ethical. So I'm just here today to ask your help. Thank you very much. Right. This is not an action item. Um, we have asked our staff for advice and to keep us informed. Um, I, I just want to know, I understand the, the emotional content of, of the, 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 that you're expressing. That even if it's below the standards, it, it's very troubling to you to to have find that, that your well water is not as clean as you thought it was. And, and I, I'm sorry for that. The other part of that is that when we act on these things, when we deal on these things, we need to have all the information available for us and we need to have all the parties. So that's why we can't deal with it factually and, and have to be careful about how far we go in. But I want to make sure we have your information and you understand that we recognize how difficult this is. And I reiterate that there are a number of, of uh, avenues that this is progressing. We appreciate the community staying very much involved and, and working to make sure that the broader community is informed. 
there's a lot of characterization work ongoing, as you noted from one of the slides, that uh, the vapor. Um, so vapor testing started up last week, and we should be getting results of that in the next, next few weeks. Uh, the wellhead treatment uh, for the Siva Ranch will be installed in this month, and uh, a lot of things moving forward. So we're getting additional information, and as we've noted, we'll continue to keep the board posted and the community posted as we, we get this information in, make sure we're transparent on all of the information. And we remain committed to pushing the discharger to give us a robust and uh, complete remedial action plan by the required date of January 1, and then we'll be uh, reviewing that and taking action as soon as possible thereafter. And, and Bruce, along the way, it was mentioned that there would be a meeting with interested parties, the county supervisor and county health department. So Correct. With the public health aspects, do you have any idea when that might be scheduled? Stephen Hill with, with the water board. Uh, I, I spoke with Ralph this morning, and uh, we're, that's still in the process of being set up. A supervisor of Connelly's office, uh, I think, will probably have a lead role in setting that up. They've taken a significant interest in this case. And you need enough information from the sampling to be able to have that in the meeting, is that correct? Well, actually, the meeting is going to focus more on what's, what's, the, what's happening with the, the, the draft cleanup plan. We know it's due in only about four months. Uh, so. We want to ask the question, uh, is, there, is there a possibility of accelerating it? Um, what sorts of ideas are under discussion for the cleanup methodology? Um, and things like that. Okay. I'm sorry, this is a public meeting with the discharger's consultant. This is meant to be the key stakeholders, so representatives of the discharger, the water board, the supervisor's office, uh, Marin County Environmental Health, the residents or representatives of the residents. So the, the folks that have a significant interest in this topic. 